This is part 50 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the concept of migrations in Entity Framework Core. So, what is a migration? Migration is an Entity Framework Core feature that keeps the database and our application model classes, also called Entity classes, in sync with each other. Let's understand what we mean by this with an example. At the moment, when we run this sample project that we have been working with so far in this video series, we get this SQL exception, cannot open database employee DB. And this error makes sense because we don't have this database created yet. One way to create this database is by creating a migration first and then executing that migration. At this point, one question you might have is, how does our application know it has to work with this database called employee DB? Well, that's because if we take a look at our application configuration file, that is this app settings.json file, notice we have our connection string right here and we have specified the database name as employee DB and our application is looking for this employee DB database in Microsoft SQL Server local DB. One of the easiest ways to look at what databases we have within Microsoft SQL Server local DB is by using SQL Server Object Explorer window. Notice we have the SQL Server node here. When I expand that, we see SQL Server local DB, local DB backslash MS SQL local DB. When we expand that, we have the databases folder. When we expand that, notice we don't see a database with name employee DB. And that's the reason we are getting this SQL exception. Cannot open database employee DB. To have this database created, we first have to create a migration. To work with migrations in ASP.NET Core, we can either use the Package Manager console or the .NET Core CLI. The .NET Core CLI is a cross-platform tool, so it works on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Since we are using Visual Studio, let's use the Package Manager console. To get to it, click on View, Other Windows, Package Manager console. There are many commands related to migrations. Let's look at some of the common ones. First, we have get-help command. As the name implies, this command provides help. If we want help about Entity Framework Core itself, then supply this argument about underscore Entity Framework Core. Let's look at this command in action. The command is get-help. Notice when I type get-h and then press the tab key, we get IntelliSense. We have get-help highlighted. When I press the tab key again, the command is autocompleted. We want help about Entity Framework Core. So I supply the argument about underscore Entity Framework Core and then press the enter key. There we go. The command completed and we see a lot of help text related to Entity Framework Core. And we also have a list of commands that we could use. If we want help with any of these commands, we could again use get-help command. For example, if we want help with using add migration command, we supply add-migration command as the argument to get help command. When I hit the enter key, we get help related to using add dash migration command. We use add dash migration command to add a new migration. So let's use the command add dash migration again. When I press tab, the command is auto completed. We have to supply a name for the migration. If we don't supply a name, let's see what's going to happen. Notice we have a prompt supply values for the following parameters name. We have to supply a name to create the migration. Since this is our initial migration, let's name our migration initial migration and then hit the enter key. There we go. The command completed successfully and if we take a look at the solution explorer vendor, notice we have a folder with name migrations created within our project and inside this folder we have a file with name initial migration and in this file we have code to create a table with name employees and inside this table we have these columns id name email department at this point you might be thinking why is Entity Framework Core creating a table with name employees well that's because if we take a look at this app db context file Notice we have a DB set property on our employee model class. We named this DB set property employees. So the table name here in the migration code is employees. 
and the columns in this table correspond to the properties that we have in our employee model class. Within our employee model class, we have these properties, ID, name, email, and department. So within the migration code, we have the corresponding columns. And if we take a look at the name column, for example, its data type is string because the name property data type within our model class is also string. It even respects this max length attribute. So if you look at the name column within the database, notice the column will be created with a maximum length of 50 characters. Now to add this migration, we have used add migration command. We don't have this employees table created yet because we have not executed the migration. To execute the migration, we use update database command. Let's look at this in action. In the package manager console window, Let's execute update dash database command. There we go, the command completed. With the update database command, we can specify a migration. When we specify a migration, then that specific migration will be applied. In our case, we did not specify a migration. When a migration is not specified, then by default, the latest migration will be applied. In our case, we only have one migration, the initial migration, so that initial migration is applied. When this command is executed, it first created the employees db database because we don't have the database so notice here we have the create database command after the database is created it created the employees table within that database we can confirm that by refreshing the databases folder here notice we have employee db database within that we have employees table and the employees table has ID name, email, and department columns. Notice the name column. It is created with a maximum length of 50 characters. Now let's run our project and see what's going to happen. Notice now we don't have the SQL exception, cannot open database employee DB anymore because we have the database already created. But the page is empty. That's because at the moment our employees table does not have any data. We can confirm that by right clicking on the employees table and then select this option view data. Notice the table is empty and that's the reason we don't see anything here. If we want, we can add a new employee to the employees table by using this create employee form. But we are going to take a different approach. We'll discuss how to seed this employees table with some initial data in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.